walked this street a thousand times or more, and I hope that I still do when I'm born. Welcome to the Republic of Me. My name is Ivana and this is a channel where I share my creative journey and some parts of my life living on an island in the Mediterranean. Good morning. Normally, um, normally I don't uh, talk about what I'm drinking. You know how sometimes uh, you see podcasters and they tell you what they're drinking. Normally I don't do that, but um, for the past couple of days I've been trying uh, something different. I had a conversation with a friend of our a friend of ours who I didn't see for a while, and uh, I think he's on uh, he's been practicing keto diet for for years, mm -hmm. and he feels much better. I'm not on keto, but he suggested that I put a bit of mm -hmm. butter in my coffee in the morning. And I heard about it before, I think it was called Bulletproof Coffee or something like that. I heard about it on different uh, other podcasts uh, that I was watching and the benefits of it. And apparently it's supposed to um, reduce the sugar crashes that, um, that I get a lot because I have low blood sugar and very low blood pressure. And uh, so I get shaky very often, like a couple of times a day I get, uh, I get the shakes. Uh, so before I ever drive, uh, before I ever get in the car, I need to make sure that I have eaten or I just don't dare. And uh, because it can come out of nowhere and it doesn't really give me um, any warning. And uh, I've been trying it for the past couple of days. And I can see the difference. So this is not any kind of advice. I'm just telling you because uh, I brought the coffee with me. And I put a bit of butter in it and a bit of uh, no milk, just um, a bit of heavy cream. So let's see. Let's see if that works. Because uh, this is something that I've been living with all my life. And you kind of learn how to live with it. So you learn, to, you get to know your body. So I know not to drive if I haven't eaten or um, I always have something sweet in my, um, in, in my bag just in case. So it's, it's not diabetic, it's hypoglycemic uh, and it's just below the norm. It's nothing dangerous, but it does affect uh, my daily life and very low blood pressure. So completely off the topic of my usual uh, stuff but since I have the coffee with me I, th I thought I'll tell you what's happening and what I'm trying out. Mm. I, made a, I made a note, made a list of uh, what I want to talk to you about because we are getting ready for uh, the cruise and there is just so much uh, that we need to do because we are going for um, two weeks but it's actually longer than that because the cruise leaves from uh, from UK so we have to fly to UK and then board the ship in Southampton and then the cruise is two weeks go back to UK and then uh, fly over here and there is a bunch of us going so um, so I have to organize for my kids as well as well as uh, me and um, what I'm gonna take what I'm gonna take to knit again worrying about um, needles if they're going to be taking them because I don't have I don't, we only have carrier in each because one time when I went to UK when I went for my uncle's funeral I went only for a couple of days and they lost my suitcase 
So I had no clothes to wear, I had to go and buy everything. But the problem is now is that we only have like one day in the UK before we leave for the cruise. I can't afford to risk that. So I can't land there and have the suitcase lost because three days later when the suitcase arrives, we're going to be somewhere on the, in the sea. So I only have a carry-on, so uh, I have to like plan what needles I'm going to take because I can't put them in the luggage down. So I made a list because I'm all into lists uh, this, these weeks now as we are getting ready of uh, when I want to talk to you. I finished uh, the, the jumper cascade 220 fingering that I was working on. And surprise, surprise, I made a turtleneck. Um, I'll show it to you first and then I'll try it on because it's a bit hot. Here it is. It's a perfect jumper. You'll see it when, uh, when I try it on. The um, yarn bloomed. Uh, last, uh, last video I couldn't, uh, <laughs> I couldn't think of the word and one of you wrote in the comments and says I was screaming at the, at, the, at the screen saying the yarn blooms, the yarn blooms and I couldn't find the words. So the yarn bloomed and the fabric that it created is really nice because I used a bit larger needle even though it's light fingering which is 500 meters per 100 grams uh, I used three millimeter needle for it and here is the fabric that it created. So it's lightweight, but it's not, not uh, see-through. Well, we're going to see it actually when I try it on because I'm wearing a black bra, so we'll see if, uh, if it's any see-through and I think I'm going to be able to see it only when I edit the video. When I was making this jumper, because I'm trying it out, uh, trying the recipe that I'm making, so in a different weight of yarn, um, I didn't do the turtleneck first. I, I just did the neckline and I was going to do it at the end of, um, <clears throat> of knitting, pick up the stitches and do it at the end of the knitting. And just as well I did that because the jumper was knitted in 3mm needles. So what I did when I picked up the stitches, I knitted like a small collar here and I did it in 2mm needles just to kind of have the ribbing tighter. And then when I use a stretchy bind off, I go down even one more size of the needle. So I bound off in uh, two millimeter needles. And I tried it on and I couldn't put it on top of my head. It just wouldn't fit. So thankfully I ripped, I was, because it was an afterthought collar, I ripped it off, uh, ripped it out and I knitted the, the collar in three millimeter, just the same as the rest of the body. So I, for a bind off, I used two and a half and it was fine. But I go down for the bind off only when I use the stretchy bind off. Otherwise it just kind of gets like ruffles. And then I did that and it was just like a small, sm small collar here. And I tried it on and it was nice, but um, I wasn't fully happy with it. So then I ripped it again and I knitted the turtleneck and I was very happy with how that came out. So now the issue is that this was going to be for the cruise because I wanted the lightweight uh, jumper just in case it gets uh, cold in the evening. However, now having a turtleneck, I think it's going to be too warm for that. I might take it because it's very lightweight, so it's not going to take a lot of uh, space in my uh, in my suitcase. But I think a turtleneck would be a too much for a Mediterranean cruise. Or I might have just that as a warmer piece and the rest of the things just as layering pieces. But saying that, um, I am knitting. I thought about it a bit too late and it's something that I wanted to try for a while. It's been a craze for, for some months now. I am knitting and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to finish before we leave Saturday Shrug by Jackie Rose from um, Caddy Jack's Knits. And you've seen a bunch of them all over, all over the YouTube and Instagram. 
it's a beautiful one by one rib uh, recipe or pattern it's just a shrug it's a tube that you just uh, slip over I can't try it on for you because um, it's not finished and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish it before we leave but let me just show you in case uh, in case I do um, the color the color scheme that I have used it's made out of my hand spun which I'm holding with a more hair blend so both of uh, both of them are ha my hand spun and uh, the pattern is uh, by Jackie Rose as I said and the black that I'm using in the shrug is actually the black that I have used in the shawl that I made uh, for her a couple of months ago. I really like how this uh, color combination is coming out. I'm, I'm making the, the stripes a bit uh, thinner, the, the black stripes, so I'm not making the block stripes that they're all the same size. I'm liking how it looks and um, if it fits the way that I'm hoping that it's gonna fit and it fits beautifully on everyone, I see myself making much more of these as, as well as for gifts and for myself because it's a perfect, um, you can experiment with color and I don't wear a lot of color but and I like my clothes to be very simple. And uh, But this is a nice way to add that little pop of color, that little bit of an interest. Because even my clothes, um, my store-bought clothes, they are very, very simple. Like this, uh, this top that you see, um, this is the only blue one that I have, but I have a few, um, few in black. I think I showed it when I was packing for Mykonos, it's from Gap. This is my uniform, especially the black ones. Like whenever I wear the, the blue one, I'm like, damn it, it's like the black ones are dirty, but um, the black ones, that's my uniform and jeans. And uh, it would be really nice to kind of have um, these shrugs as a pop of color. So even with normal clothes, um, I would wear very simple clothes, whether it's trousers or jeans, and just a very simple t-shirt or, um, or a jumper, very plain. But then where I would kind of put a bit of interest, I like earrings. I don't really like necklaces on me. I don't feel comfortable in them. But I like nice heavy earrings and I like a lot of bracelets and um, some really nice Kika shoes and the handbags. So that is usually where I bring the interest into my clothes. And it's been like that for years. Whereas I keep my clothes simple. So that's a long-winded... Um, explanation of uh, why I think these will be perfect if um, if they fit me the way that I'm hoping that they will and I'm hoping that I'm gonna finish it in time for the cruise because that would be great um, because the air condition on the ship and uh, and so forth so let me uh, I'll try this on for you now but looking at the list before I try this on I wanted to uh, tell you uh, just a quick update uh, about my garden. Now that we are leaving, I have so much th so much harvest that I need to do, and we need to see how we're gonna are we going to freeze it because being away for almost three weeks, a lot of them they are going to either get spoiled. I mean, they're going to be ready for picking. And the other day, I took like a really large basket of. Uh, cabbage and uh, kohlrabi and beetroots to, to my mom so she can do something with it and I have to harvest more and uh, see what we're going to do uh, with the food before we leave. But we do have one tree, one fruit tree. It's a lockwa tree. We have more fruit trees but this is the one that uh, was we just harvested in the past couple of weeks. It's a lockwa tree which in Cyprus we call um, Mespila. And a couple of years ago, I bought it as a tiny, just like a little stick, like a little tiny tree. I bought it, I think like three years ago, planted it. And the first year, I think I got two of the two fruits. The following year, I um, know, oh so this is the fourth year. So the following year, I got like maybe six. Last year we had none, and this year, 
There was such a large harvest that we didn't know what to do with them anymore. The tree just exploded and we had mespillas coming out of our ears. So I gave some to my parents, some to my sister, to neighbors. We've been eating them. The birds have been eating them off the tree, but um, I have to see whether I'm gonna need to pick a few more, uh, some more of them uh, because they're gonna get spoiled until we come back and see what I'm gonna do. Just put them in the fridge or do we just overdose uh, on, on mespilas uh, before we leave? The, when I was looking at, uh, at Lokwat, at, at uh, mespila tree, Cyprus is full of them, uh, Mediterranean is full of them, but it surprised me that it comes, uh, that it originates from uh, cooler areas of uh, South Central China. And even though sometimes it's called Japanese plum or Chinese plum, um, I was surprised that it comes from cooler areas because here it grows by the sea and I think if we planted it in the mountains, it wouldn't do so well. But I think it adapted to uh, Mediterranean climate and uh, you can find it everywhere. And the fruit is lovely, it's sweet, but it's also a little bit tangy, If it, is that the word? Um, it's not sour, but a bit tangy. I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, we, we have been really enjoying, uh, enjoying it for the past couple of weeks. And I have recorded when Alex and I were harvesting, uh, harvesting the, tr the fruit from the tree over the past uh, weeks. Before, and there was no every story I have told. Here I put on the jumper so you can see how it looks. It's um, it's a perfect jumper. It's a perfect jumper, perfect fit. It's made out of, I showed it in the last video, Cascade 220 fingering. And in this color, I, I put it in the description in the last, I think it's called Doe Skin Header. I'll put it again in the in the description uh, below because the number is zero one uh, no zero uh, eight zero one two, but I think the name is Doe Skin Heather. Uh, I'll make sure and I'll put it in the description. And I've knitted it out of this one because that's the one that I had most of, and I wanted to test the recipe in this weight of yarn. So I have, I still have left 10 here, 2 here, that's 12, and almost 100 grams here. So, um, no, this, is, this, this would be 50 grams. So 10, 12 skeins, and uh, I almost another full one, there are 50 gram skeins. This jumper took less than 200 grams for me, so less than uh, four skeins of, uh, of the yarn. And I really like it. I love the model, you know I love the model. This is my go-to my go-to uh, construction and the model of the jumper. 
As we spoke, I like simple clothes. And for me, it's not necessarily... I, I enjoy watching different podcasters when they show different patterns. And uh, there has been a few that I have seen that I, that I thought like, oh, I would really like to make that. But in general, no. In general, for me, I like to play with different yarns. And not. Uh, it's not that I uh, kind of like when I see a yarn and say, oh, I must try it. But like a palette when I'm painting, I like to find the yarns that I'm really happy with and that I like to work with and, uh, and then just enjoy them. For me, it's more about the fabric. That's why I spin. That's why I spin my own yarn. It's the yarn that gives me more joy and I would be more than happy to have everything the same. The turtleneck, raglan and a few of uh, these other ones that I have seen the, as in patterns that I would like to knit. And I also want to try one other one, which I have to work with uh, lighter weight yarn because I think this one would be good at that. Um, I want to make, I have a store-bought jumper. I'll show it to you some other time, but I have a store-bought jumper that I bought years ago. And it has like bad sleeves, wide neckline, no ribbing, bad sleeves like that. And it's just, it's such a feminine jumper and I really enjoy wearing it. So what I might do at some point, it's kind of take the measurements of that jumper and uh, try it out in this yarn, possibly the same color because it's going, I have the most of it and I know that I'm going to have enough because I don't know how much it's going to take and make uh, that jumper as well. And then if I get hooked on that model as well, then I'm gonna make a bunch of those as well. So before I show you what other colors I have, so here it is, three millimeter needles for the ribbing on the collar as well as uh, down. Raglan. The recipe that I'm making, um, the sleeves I don't tend to decrease, hardly ever. So the sleeves are the same with everywhere, but the reason why they kind of gather a bit here is that for the ribbing on the sleeves I have went down a needle size. So the ribbing here is two and a half millimeter. I could have gone with three, but for a change, it kind of, um, it's not a balloon sleeve, but it just kind of gathers a bit here. What I have done differently here, I wanted to try, and I did it in the previous uh, green one that I showed you in the previous video of the Cascade 220, um, worsted weight. Short rows, I did them differently. Because whenever I make short rows, just here at the back, the way that most of the patterns have you make them, because I'm pretty straight and I don't have that curve, um, I have a bunch of fabric that gathers here when I do short rows like that. So in order to kind of lift the neck a bit at the back, lift the back, what I thought to do, if I spread the short rows throughout knitting the jumper, let's see how that is going to work. And I tried it on the previous one and I did it on this one and it worked perfectly. So what I did is I would make a short row every 16 round, 16th round. So every 16th round, I would just make one short row just on the back until it gets to the raglan increase but because the sleeves are increasing every time you go a bit further and um, hopefully you're going to be able to see it but it worked fine it worked great i think at least for my at least for my body type so um try it out but uh, look 
everybody has different uh, different bodies but for me that works because whenever I do as I said the short rows just on the back I have a bunch of uh, fabric there that I don't need so then I wouldn't even make the short rows but like this this way it worked perfectly for me and this is how I think I'm going to continue doing them I would do those short rows every 16th round and I would stop doing them once I split for the sleeves so I wouldn't continue all the way to the bottom of the jumper I would do it just until I split for the sleeves okay so thankfully I'm not too hot wearing this so maybe it's not gonna be too bad if I take it with me but I wanted to show you uh, what other colors I have because this is the first time I'm working with Cascade 220 fingering on its own. I worked with it holding uh, together with another yarn, but this is working with it alone. And uh, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. I don't know how it's going to hold up because, as I said, I just made it. I, do, I don't know if it's going to peel, if it's going to stretch, but so far... I love it and um, now I have a bunch of colors um, I don't know I had them for a couple of years now did they have it on sale on Lovecrafts at some point I'm not sure I think this will be beautiful in color work jumpers if I ever make one but um, I gathered a lot and they must have been on sale because I see that some of them I have only like two skeins each so maybe it was not uh, available more but so you saw this one how many I have what did we say almost three 13 uh, 50 gram skeins then I have black um, how many black one two three four five six seven I like this combination a lot um, but do you know how many jumpers I can make out of this because if this one and it's like a full-size jumper turtleneck proper length long long sleeves not not uh, not three-quarter or anything like that this one for me less took less than 200 grams so I have this light beige I think it's called doe skin header uh, black large quantity i have this other one which is similar to this but darker that is also very very beautiful and that would pair beautifully with black and it reminds me of the um, saturday shrug that i'm making so of these i have one two three four five six seven so i have seven of those and i would need only four for a jumper I have two of this. Oh, did I show this one to you up close? This one, I don't know the names, but um, I think it's Walnut Heather. The number is 8013. Um, I'll try to put the links um, or I'll put the links to all of them and then you can look at the colors um, I have two of this light beige so that is not enough uh, for a jumper but maybe I'll buy some more or I use it in color work I have four of the navy So that would be enough for another jumper. I have four of this dark green, like pine or moss color. So that is also enough for a jumper. And I have four of the red. I don't know if the red is blowing out a bit. Based on what I see on the screen, it is, but I don't know how it's going to be when I look at it on the computer. It's actually really nice uh, lipstick red. On the screen, right now, it looks a bit orangey, but it's not. I have to see when I'm editing. So I have a bunch of this yarn. There is another color that um, I think it's called Japanese Maple that I saw that I really like, that I would like to order. 
So maybe when we come back, um, I'll order that as well. And looking at this, I'm thinking, my God, that's a lot of yarn. However, one of you, I was reading the comments uh, last night from the previous video. One of you wrote to me that uh, she has, uh, or he, I'm not sure from the, from the name of the channel, of the account, um, a lot of Cascade yarn, Cascade 220, I think. And they said, um, I have, wait for it, <laughs> enough yarn for 45 jumpers, 45 sweaters. Enough Cascade 220 for 45 sweaters. I was like, that's crazy. It's great. <laughs> I don't know where they fit it all, but uh, 45 sweaters. So um, looking at this, I'm thinking, oh, maybe I'm not that bad in that, uh, that case, but um, I think I will order more and kind of use it because I'm happy with the yarn, kind of use it as, uh, as I said, like when I paint a palette. Um, once I'm happy with a certain oil paint that I use, I don't necessarily look for much more different um, different brands. I do have different brands and I do have different yarns as well and of course I love different yarns as well but once I find the paint that I like then I just stick with it and I use it um, and I use it uh, all the time and the same with this if I can create a palette of um, color palette of this yarn I think I'm gonna be happy and being a very lightweight uh, yarn I can play with it by holding together with uh, some other yarns as well. I wanted to show you, I did a, a, a skein of uh, hand spun, well, a few skeins, but my favorite colors are the muted colors, natural colors. You even see from the selection that I have. But also when I'm spinning, sometimes I get tired of it. And uh, I wanna, um, you know, I wanna work with something brighter. Not necessarily because I'm gonna wear it, but I wanna work with brighter colors. And I have this fiber, which is blend of, uh, I got it from World of Wool, Wool and it's a blend of alpaca and merino it's so soft so soft and I have spun um, a skein just uh, this uh, fiber not blending it with anything else it's a single ply just to kind of get it out of my system and this is how it came out the color is lovely now knowing myself I don't know if I would wear this color even though I love it but I don't know if I would wear it so what I thought to do is kind of mute it down a bit but not kill the color just kind of like mute it down a bit and blend it with um, so what I did I used this this fiber and I blended it with I forgot now what I blended it with. It's something brownish, but was it llama or alpaca? Actually, no, actually, I think it was oatmeal blue face Lester, but I'm not sure. So I have blended that, that fiber with this brownish one, and this is what I got. I'm not happy with it and um, not like this like this it's lovely because you can still see the blue but when I knitted with it I tried to knit with it a swatch I didn't make a lot of it I have this skein and a bit more um, it didn't just mute the color it kind of made it look a bit dirty so uh, I don't think I'm going to continue spinning this particular blend. This I think would look lovely in weaving. 
so I will use it in weaving because then you have also the play of the warp as well it's not just this yarn um, so I think I'm going to keep it for another woven project just to add the stripe and I think it's going to look beautiful but I don't think I'll continue spinning for, um, for a jumper or a shawl project um, for something that I'm going to knit with I actually think that I'm going to spin only this, only the fiber as is, and possibly knit myself a jumper in it. It's completely out of my comfort zone and it's gonna take ages because I'm spinning pretty fine. Although I always think I'm spinning pretty fine and then once I ply it and wash it, it just like fluffs up because I'm kind of spinning woolen or se semi-woolen. So there is a lot of air in the fiber and it just fluffs up. So I never get very thin yarn out of it. But I think that I'm going to over the course of the next couple of months spin this fiber and make myself uh, a jumper out of it so thank you for watching i hope you're well i recorded the footage while i was blending this uh, blue fiber with uh, with the oatmeal blue face lester i recorded um, i got footage of me carding it and some of uh, spinning it so i'm gonna say bye for now and i'm gonna leave you with that thanks for watching bye mm -hmm. i will get close to your heartache if you want to open your door mm -hmm. i'm feeling kind of lost when you're Whatever that is choking your chest I can see it in your eyes that you're shaking Cause you're holding it back mm -hmm. Maybe you'll make up your mind Now I'm here by your side So let it all out of me Forget about what's wrong Let